Hello guys, my name is Nikhil Malankar and in this video, we will be talking about all the components that go into picture before you even start making your game. And welcome to Scalar Academy's YouTube channel and in this video, we will discover what happens before a game gets developed. So friends, uh, before a game gets developed, there is a lot of uh, things that go into uh, picture. You know, for example, making a game is a very complex task. So you need to actually plan your game properly. So the very first step is planning. And before that step, there is a pre-step that is the concept stage, wherein you are uh, struck with an idea that, hey, this is the game that you want to make. Uh, so as soon as you get that idea, your very first step should be to start documenting that idea. And the process of documenting a game idea is pretty simple. You just need to take a piece of paper or an online document and start writing or typing down your ideas on that document. It's as simple as you know writing a one line statement or uh, maybe per, uh, multiple paragraphs that detail out what your game is going to be about, what platforms uh, is it going to be on. Uh, additionally, uh, you know, what will be the control system? How will the users play your game? Maybe you can also add in details wherein, uh, you know, um, which platforms your game will be deployed on. For example, it can be deployed on maybe a mobile platform, but within mobile platform will be on Android, iOS, and all those factors. So planning is really important. And this entire, process is actually called as game design documentation process. The, the, the document that gets made during this process is called as the game design document, which in game development world is commonly referred to as GDD. Now, a GDD is a very important piece of paper or a document because without a good GDD, essentially you will be just working on an idea that is in your head and at times it may also happen that you forget a few critical components or elements uh, that need to go in the game. So it is very important and mandatory for you to make sure that you have a proper GDD in place so that eventually you don't forget any of the critical, uh, critical components that have been planned for the development of your game. That's one. Uh, within GDD, now, what you need to detail out is all the factors that I just mentioned, but a very compo uh, critical component of uh, a GDD is your game mechanics. Now, what are game mechanics? Game mechanics are essentially what will make your game fun to play. So maybe you've identified what kind of game you want to make, right? Maybe it's an endless runner game. But uh, what will be the game's mechanics? So how will the controls of the game be? And how easy would it be or how tough would it be for your game to pan out and you know essentially get a response from the player? So all those uh, factors get drawn uh, or you know uh, written down in the GDD. And based on this GDD, uh, people then start to work on a prototype. Uh, what is a prototype? It's a very simple core working of your game a core concept of your game that gets made with just you know essentially uh, cubes or very raw shapes so a prototype is essentially a, a very small demo of sorts without any fancy graphics without any artwork it's just bare bones game mechanics now game mechanics are very important to uh, plan out in the very first stages initial stages primarily because uh, a game mechanic is what will make or break your game. So the foundation of your game should actually be a really strong and you know well thought of game mechanic. Uh, some common examples of uh, some games having really good game mechanics can be Angry Birds. Angry Birds had a very simple game mechanic when you fling the birds from point A to point B. That was the game mechanic. That was the core game mechanic. Uh, then Subway Surfers, for example, Subway Surfers core game mechanic was running, uh, you know, on an endless track and your controls were swipe left, swipe right, uh, swipe up or swipe down. So if you swipe left, the character uh, goes on to the left, swipe right, it takes the character onto the right, swipe up, uh, makes your character jump and swipe down essentially helps your character duck. That was the game mechanic. So whenever you're planning a game, your game's mechanics should be really well thought of and they should be fun to play. It's not that, you know, you just uh, come up with a game mechanic and then uh, start deploying uh, time and resources to start churning out the production aspect of the game. No, what you should do instead is test out game mechanics with a small set of audience first, take a feedback from them on what they feel can be improved in the game's mechanics, 
and based on that try to improve your game's foundational mechanics and this is because uh, you know without a strong game mechanic your entire game will fall on flat on its face if you don't have a strong game mechanic plan then eventually your game will not be fun to play and if something is not fun to play it will either get bashed badly by the audience or simply get uninstalled and forgotten so you need to make sure that uh, whatever you are making you are constantly taking feedback uh, on whatever you've made that will help you in two ways one it will help you validate your idea because at the end of the day you are making this for the audience and if the audience is not liking what you are making uh, then there's no point to even put out the game in the market right so since you are making this game for the masses making this game for the audience you need to make sure that whatever you are making is really good to play and it shouldn't occur to you uh, after you've put in like months and months on efforts you should be clear <clears throat> within the first few weeks that your game's core mechanics are good to play and once you have that clarity then you can go ahead and you know start making all the assets that are required to make your game and while you're doing this in parallel it is always important uh, for you to take feedback as i mentioned earlier because that feedback will really help you validate and uh, come up with good ideas if uh, from the people themselves on what is it that they expect from your game because most of the times what happens is you come up with an idea you think of it in one particular direction but when you start taking feedback you start to understand that hey maybe something that i had thought of initially is not even good to play or not even fun to play in that case it also helps you pivot from your original idea and there's no bad thing or there's no stigma around pivoting if uh, you know uh, you are making something that may potentially not be fun to play then it would not make any sense for you to invest any further time and effort into it rather taking feedback pivoting and making something fun to play as per the audience expectations would be a good path to go ahead uh, now th- it might also be possible that you are making something that is really unique and original uh, and maybe you may think that hey people might not understand this or pe- people will have a hard time consuming the content that i am making so here you need to ask yourself a question what is the target audience have you identified the target audience because before you end up making a game it is also important for you to identify who is the target audience for this game and who is it uh, particularly uh, that you are making this game for because let's say for example if you are making a game that is a racing game and you are showing it to people who are interested in playing shooting games so obviously you may not get the kind of feedback that you need for your game because obviously the people that you are showing the game to are interested in playing shooting games but you are showing them a game that is a racing game so obviously the kind of feedback that you will get over there will not be uh, accurate so you need to identify this subset of audience that uh, enjoys perhaps playing racing games and uh, someone who can give you critical feedback uh, and during this entire process it is possible that you may get negative feedback and you need to, you need to be open to negative feedback because a lot of people get demotivated uh, due to negative feedback but that's really just a part and parcel of almost any profession out there uh, there will be positive feedback there will be negative feedback there will be mixed feedback there will be support there will be uh, you know hatred or even uh, pessimism around your idea that's all fine that's all a part and parcel of life you need to identify percentages and if the majority of your um, target audience likes your idea then go ahead with it a general um, you know good estimate would be if people more than 60% of people are liking your idea then you can really go ahead and churn out um, uh, you know production hours into the uh, the game that you're planning if you're getting a really negative response from people saying that hey we don't even like your game or this is a really boring idea then listen to them uh, ask them questions like what is it that you find boring be respectful and polite when interacting and taking feedback and this is because you may think that you're making game that is really unique that is innovative uh, but people might not need that innovation people might just want to play something that is really substandard and uh, you know has been tried and tested over the years so that can be one subset of audience that uh, enjoys playing games that are already popular out there 
uh, additionally there can be a audience that loves experimental games so identify the people that you want to interact with people that you want to bond with and people who you want to build this experience for identify your own self as well what is it that you're trying to build is it just another standard game or is it something that is really unique out there in the market if it is just a standard game then there are multiple ways to validate your idea one simple way is just you know taking feedback from people there's no second uh, option over there feedback is very critical and uh, if you are making something that is unique then the answer is also taking feedback from people if you're making this game for yourself as a hobby then obviously you don't need to take any kind of feedback or opinion of people but if you're building this for the masses it is going to be going into the hands of people who may have never heard of you may have never heard of the game concept uh, that uh, you know you are uh, selling to them or uh, giving them to play right you may not be selling it to them you may be giving them uh, as an experience to play so in that case uh, they have no idea about your game they have no idea about you so there is no direct connect between them um, except the game that's in their hands so it is very important for you to communicate without uh, communicating with them directly uh, and uh, what uh, like what will be the medium of your communication that indirect communication the medium of communication is your game your idea your entire thought process should be curated in the form of your game everything that you communicate in your game design document everything that you write down in your game design document should be uh, you know uh, interfaced through your game uh, now, what is an interface? It's just a layer uh, of interaction between the user and the game. But here, your game itself is the interface of communication between uh, the user and you. Because you uh, over here have conceptualized the game, right? And after you've conceptualized the game, after that, uh, it is not your job to um, communicate how to play the game. It is the job of the product that you've made it is the job of the tutorials that you have curated it is the job of how well that game is developed so once you have identified that hey this is a experience that is really good to play and you've taken ample amount of feedback from people saying that hey we really like your game you know the first few levels are really interesting to play and uh, we think that it's a generally a good game so that's when you um, you know can solidify your thought process that hey whatever you're uh, making is good and that's when you need to start putting in the hours in terms of asset creation and stuff so those are a couple of things that you need to uh, keep in mind uh, when uh, before you start making a game but there are some other aspects as well uh, such as determining the art style uh, what kind of engine is it that you want to make uh, your game in uh, then uh, you know what sort of a team you will need to make this kind of experience so all of these factors really go into picture uh, additionally of what kind of hardware you will need to make a game uh, so this is directly dependent on the platform in which you want to make your game in right so let's say if you want to make a game that is a um, a, a, not a hardcore game or a game that is made for a mobile platform so in that you don't really need an extensive set of hardware uh, but if you want to make a pc game a console game uh, uh, you know and you really need that kind of hardware so identifying the right set of hardware is critical for you to make uh, your games that's one uh, post that in uh, whatever game you're making uh, will it be uh, a pc a mobile game or a uh, a uh, pc game uh, then in addition to that how will the controls pan out uh, so if it's a mobile game will the controls be uh, touch based will they be uh, you know gyro based or accelerometer based whatever so you need to plan all those things out in terms of a pc game uh, will there be controller support um, all of those questions really come into picture uh, and in terms of identifying the talent uh, obviously you need to make sure that you are making something that is good to play and in order to uh, ensure that you need the right set of components when it comes to components it's really a matter of fact of what kind of people you are uh, hiring right uh, be it programming be it art be it sound 
right what sort of people that you need uh, to build around uh, your team or build in your team to make sure that they are enabled enough to make the game experience that you really want to make so uh, you know a couple of factors can be for example you know you want to make a mobile game so you need experts in that particular uh, software or engine and a prerequisite to that is identifying which engine you are going to use to make that game so uh, really the way to determine that is pretty simple if uh, as a rule of thumb this is what uh, we personally follow it may differ from company to company and ideology to ideology but as a company we prefer uh, using a unity game engine to make our mobile games if we are building a pc game uh, we uh, tend towards more um, high graphic intensive engine that is unreal engine that is widely used um, for making triple a quality games and if you want to make games um, that are browser based that don't have a high uh, dependency on the kind of hardware uh, then i would suggest going ahead for this engine called construct 3 there are also other engines out there so identifying the right engine is also something that you need to keep in mind before you start making your game all of these factors are really important for you to uh, you know keep in mind because once you're into production then whatever things that have been preset in the pre-production stage essentially uh, become written in stone if you change any of these components then that directly affects your production timelines and that is the reason for uh, delays you know if any of these factors uh, have any sort of um, you know disturbance in them then that directly affects your timelines for example if you have hired um, a certain set of team and you realize that hey you will need some more people in the team right uh, otherwise your uh, timelines may get increased because what happens is when you determine your initial effort estimation that time you think that hey this game will get made in six months or seven months but when you're into production those timelines also slightly change there might be a buffer time that you think that okay uh, i've charted out that this project is going to take me six seven months but later on when you get into production you realize that there are n number of other things that we also need to do so that may affect our timelines and uh, delay the game by uh, say uh, three or four more months so your initial timelines of six months have now become nine or ten or eleven months or whatever that is so during that point of time your entire planning sort of changes so you need to account for best case scenario and worst case scenario both uh, so those are a couple of things uh, that you need to keep in mind uh, we'll do a quick recap so that uh, we touch upon all these base points first is primarily identifying uh, and uh, you know uh, what is it that you want to make so we, are, we were at the concept stage when we determined the idea uh, on which we want to work and we realized the importance of a game design document and why is it important for you to document down all these ideas a lot of game developers really start making games without documenting the ideas and that is a sure shot recipe for making a game that potentially might not be a good game to play uh, the second would be taking feedback importance of taking feedback is very very critical because at the end of the day you're making a game that is being played uh, that is going to be played by the masses uh, and if you're not able to uh, make a game experience that is uh, really good for the audience then your game will not be played it's as simple as that there is no uh, a, a sort of a second opinion on this uh, and that is primarily because whenever your game gets launched it is not you uh, anymore who is doing the communication it is your game that is doing the communication so it is very important for you to make sure that your game has all the elements required for the game itself to communicate to the user that hey this is how you should play me all right uh, all of these factors are very very important in addition to this as uh, we earlier uh, discussed uh, having the right set of components and team members is very important and having to plan out a proper production schedule is also important we also looked at identifying game engines and how uh, is it that you can actually uh, work with game engines um, on different different platforms so uh, is it required to have a high spec uh, specifications hardware uh, perhaps not if you're making a mobile game 
but if you are making a pc game or console game that is really intensive on graphics and needs high quality then for sure you will need a high end hardware um if at all any of these components get disturbed certainly there will be delays and delays come at a cost uh, so it is very important for you to plan out best and worst case scenarios all of these things uh, go into picture before even you start the production and that's the reason why this entire process is also termed as pre-production stage planning for your game step by step every single aspect of your game needs to be planned before you uh, proceed with the production a lot of people fail to plan and that's the reason why there is a uh, a common failure that is being faced in the gaming industry so uh, uh, my suggestion would be certainly uh, put in the time and effort that is required to create a strong foundation for your game it is okay if your game gets delayed by two or three months if it comes at a higher quality if it comes at the cost of your quality then certainly it will not be a favorable positioning for you in terms of long term maybe you may be able to churn out the game maybe you'll be able to get to the market but if your game's quality itself is not that good then why even launch the game in the first place so it is very important for you to always remind yourself on why is it that you started out in the first place because once you are in the production you're putting in your hard sweat blood and tears and um, weeks and months and years even in terms of making the game of your dreams or choice uh, so uh, before you make that sort of commitment it's a commitment not only uh, to yourself but also to your extended team members that hey we are going to take this concept work on it for a couple of months or years and then churn it out in uh, and uh, get it out in the market right so before you make that sort of commitment having this entire planning always helps there's no harm in putting in time in making sure that you whatever you will end up making will be good for the audience to play during this entire process uh, it is also very important that you keep on taking timely feedback the feedback should not just be in the pre-production stage it should also transcend into the production stage and most certainly before launch when you're testing the game uh, because as i've been repeatedly mentioning there is no point in launching a game that is not fun to play uh, because games are an entertainment medium and you're making games for people to have fun uh, or even to serve a purpose of education all right the purpose can be anything it can either be fun it can be education it can be simulation anything whatever you're making should serve the purpose for which it is being made for if it is not then it is not a good idea to work on as simple as that and uh, as we also uh, discussed earlier an idea can be good for you you may think that an idea is really exciting to work on and it will get widely adopted and accepted by the people but till the point of time you don't take an active feedback from people themselves there is no way for you to know for sure that whatever you are making will end up being used played or you know uh, accepted by the audience on a large scale so always make sure that these sort of planning is in place because if you have all these components in place then for sure once you enter into production you will get a complete clarity and idea on what you are making and that will certainly help you create a really good quality product uh, at the end of the day that is exactly what matters bringing out a product that is being uh, used by a lot of people uh, and uh, also potentially have fun with so all these games that you see out in the market uh, be it a gta mafia uh, or uh, nfs all these big big companies invest heavily in research and development they invest heavily in pre-production they uh, churn out concept arts before even they uh, start making 3d models so you know as a pipeline uh, whenever you are making a 3d model right all the more 3d models that you see in uh, whatever games you've made really good companies uh, invest heavily in making sure that they have concept arts planned out for the 3d character models even the environments so uh, every single aspect of this is a part of the pre-production uh, planning out your prototypes uh, making sure your mechanics are good uh, making sure your um, entire pipeline is in place making sure you are working with the right engine 
all of these components are very very important for you to factor into and without these components it is pointless for you to even proceed ahead in development the game development takes time it certainly takes a huge bulk of your time effort and energy uh, so might as well put in your energy in the right place and uh, you know not invest your time in making something that might not be fun to play or might not be uh, accepted by the audience uh, now having said so even after you do all of this it is still possible that you end up making a game that might not be played widely by the audience and this happens because you are not able to market your game properly but if you have built a strong foundation and you've taken initial feedback and initial people set of people have loved your game then uh, once you scale that up then uh, after that it is only going to increase for this reason it is mandatory to not take feedback from your immediate friends and family because your immediate friends and family will always give you positive feedback and uh, that is sometimes even half harmful that and that is sometimes even harmful so always getting a positive feedback is also something that is really not good uh, if it is coming from your immediate friends and family because uh, if you are taking feedback that is uh, essentially just from your close friends and family you will always get positive feedback because they don't want to hurt your sentiments and they don't potentially want to hurt your efforts or the time and energy that you are putting into but always look at it from a perspective that hey you need to have that brutal honest feedback because once you're putting your game out there in the market if it crosses 1000 downloads and 10000 downloads it is impossible for you to assume uh, that this game will only be loved right uh, even the best of the best games out there in the market have one star rating even asphalt has one star rating even grand theft auto has people who hate that game so uh, your game is just one in potentially millions or billions of games out there that have already been launched so it wouldn't be good for you to assume that whatever you are making is only going to be loved uh, because you have been only getting positive feedback go out there uh, join facebook groups join communities wherein you can just demo your game take active feedback from people who uh, are, are not directly related to you that's how you will get positive or negative feedback work with both set of feedbacks work uh, make sure that you are uh, addressing all of these concerns uh, it is great if you are able to get initial feedback do not worry that your idea may get leaked because your way of execution will be always different from someone else who might you know take your idea and work with it so don't worry about the stigma that gets attached that hey you that you are taking feedback and using that feedback maybe someone else will look at your idea or you know steal it a precautionary measure to that may be uh, that let's say if you are still worried that hey you've got something that is really unique and you think that the concept might get leaked so before you share uh, your games build or any idea with anyone make sure you sign a standard non disclosure agreement with them a non disclosure agreement essentially just binds you and the other person uh, to not share your particular confidential information with any third party or any other person so that can be a hygiene that is to be followed uh, and uh, you know generally these are the things that companies also keep in my, their mind uh, before they initiate uh, to work on any project so identifying the right set of people identifying your timelines identifying what is it that you're working on identifying the core games mechanics identifying the platforms on which your game is going to go and uh, effectively taking feedback from people who are uh, not immediately related to you but can give you honest critical positive or negative feedback that secondary but taking feedback is very mandatory so um, with that in mind guys make sure that you keep all these factors in mind before starting your game and this should be your proper checklist of things to follow before you start any uh, process of game development so those are a couple of things that uh, were in my mind and i would like to thank scaler academy for taking this initiative uh, for bringing ahead uh, all these thought processes in front of uh, their audience um, 
as game developers as aspiring game developers this is very important factor that you need to keep in your uh, mind uh, because this is what will make or break your game and uh, this will uh, really help you uh, scale up your game uh, in terms of production uh, you know uh, if you get the right set of feedback very early on uh, it will only help you uh, with regards to the entire production cycle uh, so make sure you give time to the planning uh, and once you've planned your game well once you've planned the production well if you've charted out the timelines you've figured out how who is it that you want to involve in the development process after that go all in then don't look back and then just adjust yourself based on um, the feedback and the workflow that has been potentially planned so that's it for this video guys i hope this was helpful follow scalers youtube channel subscribe to the channel and hit the like button if you like this video scaler has a lot of amazing content uh, put out on their channel so check uh, other uh, videos from scaler academy as well uh, and i hope you guys enjoyed and found uh, some useful information from this uh, video uh, and if you did hit the like button subscribe to scalers academy's youtube channel hit the bell icon and let me know your thoughts in the comment section thank you this is nikhil malankar and thank you for your time